Hello Instagram. Today I want to talk about what codependency is and the question, am I codependent? Um, so codependency is many different things. I like to define it as the chronic neglect of the self. It is a total abandonment of the self, of your own wants, needs, desires, priorities, goals, dreams in attempted service of other people or in the pursuit of approval, permission, validation, love, acceptance from others that you think you need in order to be okay, survive, all of these things. So codependency takes root in a fundamental belief or feeling that you have of inadequacy and of a need for external approval, validation, permission, things like this. Um, codependency can also be defined as the inability to set, maintain, um, and protect your own boundaries. It can, and this is sort of where the, the definition becomes so multifaceted, um, because it does show up in different ways for different people. Some people have no problems at all with boundaries, but then they are in total emotional childhood and vice versa. So another definition of codependency is... Um, when you are refusing to take responsibility for your own emotions and really wanting other people outside of you to take responsibility for them instead. Um, and consequently, it also looks like when you are taking responsibility for other people's emotions um, because they are unwilling to do that. And so you step in and fill that role. So codependency really, to wrap it up, is the neglect of the self in attempted service of others for the purpose of getting approval, love, permission, acceptance, whatever, um, from the outside world, from other people that you don't think you can be okay without and that you don't think you can get within yourself. It's really a loss of the sense of self because you externalize responsibility for your well-being. You externalize um, your emotions, you externalize your responsibilities, your accomplishments, your goals, and your dreams um, to other people. So you feel perpetually like a victim in your own life, which is the most painful place to be. I mean, I'm smiling as I'm telling you this, but it is excruciatingly painful to feel like a victim in your own life, to feel at the effect of other people in all moments of your life, um, in all areas of your life. It is incredibly painful to live this way. So to answer the question, am I codependent? If you're wondering this, if you're tuning in because you have kind of heard the word codependency thrown around, maybe your therapist mentioned the term in a session, uh, maybe you heard it on a podcast somewhere and you're like, am I codependent? I don't really know. Um, I'm going to throw out some little check boxes that might help you determine whether or not you are codependent or have codependent tendencies. Um, so let's just get started. I, I haven't made a list prior to recording this video. I'm just going to go off of the most common symptoms um, that I see in all of my clients. So. Um, you might be codependent if you have trouble setting and maintaining boundaries, if the thought of boundaries with other people terrifies you, if you think that boundaries equal a withholding of love, if you think that unconditional love means unconditional access to you, unconditional love means unconditional um, yes, if you think love means always saying yes and never saying no. You might be codependent if um, the word no is terrifying to you, but very alluring. Um, you might be codependent if you really want to say no, you can feel it in you, but you just can never bring yourself to utter the word no when someone makes a request of you. You might be codependent if you struggle with self-esteem issues and you place your sense of self-worth and self-esteem on what you're able to do for other people. If you base all of your self-worth and self-esteem on the role that you try to play in other people's lives. You might be codependent if you try to be everything to everyone. You might be a codependent if you are dissatisfied with the role that you play in someone's life because you feel that it's not important enough. 
um, and therefore you're unable to siphon enough of a sense of self-worth from your role in that person's life and so you feel purposeless. You might be codependent if you don't know what you want. <laughs> if someone asks you, well, what do you want? Either what do you want for lunch or what do you want to do with your life or who do you want to be or what sweater would you like to purchase? If you are tongue-tied in these moments and you do not know what you want, if you feel like you have a misplaced sense of identity, like you don't even know yourself enough to know what your favorite flower is or what you'd like for lunch or whether you'd like to go to this city or that city, um, then I guarantee you either you're codependent or you have codependent tendencies that have led to this indecision, to this loss of a sense of self. You might be codependent if you feel resentment a lot of the time. And resentment is one of the stripes on the codependency flag. Um, we resent other people because we have given them our personal power. We have given them more agency over our lives than we feel comfortable taking because we sometimes feel that our lives don't belong to us. That is codependency. So if you are resentful towards others, I would encourage you to look at why. What are the thoughts that you're thinking that make you feel this resentment towards this other person? It's likely that they're very codependent thoughts. It's likely that they are thoughts that make you um, believe that the other person had or has more control over your outcomes in your life than you do. And that is a lie, my love. You might be codependent if you experience a lot of regret. So regret and resentment go hand in hand, best friends. Um, and if you regret a lot of the things in your past, it's not to say that, you know, feeling amazing about these things is the ideal situation. But if you are experiencing a lot of regret and you are being held back by that regret in your day-to-day -day life today, it's likely because this regret, again, is coming from a place where you are displacing responsibility for your life onto outside circumstances that you cannot control, be it other people, other people's actions, the past, other people's behavior. These are all things that might make you feel regret, but that are holding you back um, because they are keeping you stuck in that disempowered place where you've decided that other people and events in the past that you can't control have more power over your life than you do right now in this moment. You might be codependent if you are an overeater or an overdrinker or a shopaholic or um, you have a sex addiction or you smoke weed in order to numb. You might be codependent if you use various forms of numbing and buffering and avoiding against your negative emotions because you don't feel comfortable feeling them. Some people, a lot of clients come to me and they say, well, I don't want to feel this emotion because I'm afraid it will never leave. I don't want to open up the door to feel this emotion because I feel like it will overcome me and it will consume me and I will never be able to live another day without it. So if you are experiencing that, if you are buffering and avoiding your negative emotions, it's likely a symptom of this codependency that I talked about. Um, the resentment, the regret, the disempowerment, the feeling like your life isn't yours to live, like someone else has more control over it than you do. Um, these will absolutely all drive you to use numbing and avoidance behaviors if you're not conscious enough to process those feelings and move, move through without the avoidance technique. Um, you might be codependent if you have ever said, I need you to someone. You might be codependent if someone has said, I need you to you, and it felt good in some way, even if it felt like oh, a little bit wrong or uncomfortable um, or just misaligned. Um, if, if the phrase, I need you, has ever existed between you and another person, be it a parent, a sibling, a romantic partner, a friend, a coworker, a complete stranger, it's codependency at its finest. You do not need anyone and no one else needs you. And if you fall into the trap of thinking that you need someone else in order to be happy, in order to get anything that you want in your life, you have immediately disempowered yourself. You have put your well being, your emotional well being, your physical, financial, spiritual well being um, in someone else's hands. And that was your decision. 
Um, whether you knew it at the time or not, it was a decision. And so now being conscious of that, you can decide otherwise if you choose to. Some people don't. Some people choose to place their well-being in someone else's hands. Some people would rather live in that disempowered place than face the very terrifying but albeit very liberating and incredible amazing feeling of taking full responsibility for your life, internal and external. Um, so if you've ever said, I need you, or if anyone has ever said that to you, it's likely you're codependent. I would bet some money on that. Um, you might be codependent if you have um, hopped from relationship to relationship because you're terrified of being single. You're terrified of being alone. You might be codependent if you just cannot bear the thought of being alone with yourself, being alone with your emotions, being alone with your thoughts, being alone with your sadness, your pain, your goals, whatever. Um, if you have a discomfort, an inability to be alone with yourself, to be alone with your mind, it's likely because you're codependent. Um, that's likely a symptom of it. You might be codependent if you had a traumatic childhood of any kind and are now seeing that play out in your current relationships today. Thank you, Rehan. Oh, Rehman, sorry. Oh my gosh. I like read that wrong. Um, hey, Tiff, welcome. Um, Rehman, I'm glad it's good insight for you. Um, so yes, you might be codependent if you have um, had a traumatic childhood or a traumatic past and are now seeing those patterns play out in current relationships. Again, parental relationships, relationships with siblings, relationships with your spouse, relationships with your children. Whew, let's actually go there next. Let's talk about your kids. Um, well, first I'll finish what I was saying. Um, if you are seeing the effects of your childhood trauma play out in current relationships. And trauma doesn't have to be um, physical or sexual abuse. It can also be emotional abuse, um, you know, mental abuse, manipulation, things like that, that all have, you know, effects traumatically on the body and on the mind. Um, so if you are seeing those effects play out in your relationships today, um, I guarantee you there are threads of codependency in those relationships, either in the I need you trope um, or in the savior versus martyr trope. You might feel like a martyr. You might feel like a savior. I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, it might be playing out in victimhood. It might be playing out in you looking to this person to be your savior or your um, hero, your knight in shining armor or something like this. So let's talk about kids about your children, and then we're gonna talk about um, martyrdom and victimhood, okay? Wow, this is, we're covering a lot of ground here. This is really good. Was not expecting this to have that much meat on it, but I'm in the mood to talk, so we're good. Uh, let's talk about your kids. You might be codependent on your kids if you look into your children's faces to find happiness, if you, Think that you need your children in order to be happy. You might be codependent on your children, with your children, if you need them to act a certain way, respond a certain way, behave a certain way in order for you to feel okay, in order for you to feel like a good parent, in order for you to feel loved, in order for you to feel love towards them, in order for you to feel connected, in order for you to like your spouse. You guys, if anyone's listening here, who has ever experienced any of that and you have children, please literally just talk to me, DM me, because that shit is not okay. That's not how you raise a healthy generation of children. That's not how you give your kids a better life than you had growing up. Um, <laughs> yeah, it is deep stuff. Um, and we all see this. I mean, it's so prevalent in today's society to see a parent say, oh, you make mommy so happy, or don't do that, daddy's gonna get angry, you're gonna make daddy angry. That is taking, that is you being in complete emotional childhood. That is you not taking responsibility for your own emotions and placing that responsibility onto your children. That is not okay. And again, if you're watching this, either live or with the IGTV replay, because it will be an IGTV for you guys later, if you're watching this and this resonates with you, this is not the way you want to be living. Like, you 
can make a different choice now. You can decide never ever to place emotional responsibility on your children to make you feel adequate, okay, loved, connected, whatever, ever again. You don't ever have to do that. You can make the decision today so that never happens ever again. Um, and again, if you need help with this, let me know. This is what I do. Um, but I feel very passionately about this because not only are you totally fucking yourself over, but you're also fucking your kids over. Like, why would you ever want to put the onus for your emotions onto your children? You want to teach them emotional responsibility. You want to teach them emotional adulthood, emotional maturity. At the youngest age, you can teach emotional maturity, emotional responsibility to a young child who is struggling because their sibling isn't acting exactly the way they want them to in that moment. And so for you to teach them how to take full emotional responsibility for themselves in that moment so that they can feel okay even when their sibling is like screaming or just stole a toy or broke a toy or whatever, accidentally cut some of their hair off, <laughs> like whatever the crazy shit kids do. Um, you want to teach them to regulate those emotions. You don't want to teach them in that moment to delegate responsibility for their emotional well-being to someone else or to something else because that leaves them powerless. Are you kidding? You want to give them the tools that you never had but that you're learning now. Um, <clears throat> so you might be, again, another example, you might be codependent to your kids if you experience conditional love with them. So taboo topic, I know nobody watching this who has children would ever want to admit this, but if you feel conditional love towards your children, it's because of a codependent symptom. If you feel conditional love towards your children, it's because you've decided that unless they meet the certain amount of criteria that you subconsciously or consciously in your head have decided they need to meet in order to earn your love, um, that is codependency. Similarly, if you have put conditional love upon yourself, again, that's codependency. And the only reason why you would ever place conditions on love for someone else, like your children, your spouse, a stranger, is if you have placed conditions on your own self-love. So again, this goes back to the very first thing I said, a neglect of yourself. You do not neglect yourself if you unconditionally love yourself. You will never engage in self-neglecting behaviors. You will never... Um, neglect yourself, abandon yourself, neglect your children, abandon your children if you have unconditional love for yourself because then you will have unconditional love for other people. You will be able to tap into unconditional love for your children no matter what they're doing. And important note, unconditional love, again, like I mentioned in the beginning, doesn't mean unconditional condoning. Unconditional love does not mean yes 100% of the time. Unconditional love says no. Unconditional love has boundaries. Everyone, please hear me. Unconditional love has boundaries. Unconditional love has strong boundaries that are rooted in love for yourself, not in, um, not in, you know, hatred or malintent towards others. Unconditional love has boundaries and says no. Um, and having boundaries and saying no with your children is part of raising non-codependent children, is part of raising emotionally whole children, is part of um, you never placing your happiness on their shoulders. Okay, victimhood and martyrdom. These are the last two points we're gonna talk about in this whole saga of what is codependency and am I codependent? So. Um, victimhood and martyrdom. It's funny that we're ending with these because I think these are two of the most important things we could ever talk about. They are rampant and they are misidentified, misunderstood. People talk about them the wrong way all the time. So I'm going to set the record straight. Victimhood is when you feel like a victim in your own life. Victimhood is when you feel like other people have more power in your life than you do. And so you feel... Um, disempowered, you feel small, you feel out of control, you feel resentful of other people because your life isn't the way you want it, you feel um, backed into a corner, you think, well, I don't know how to do that, well, I could never do that, well, that would never be available to me because this person did this and this and this. You're in total disempowerment, total emotional childhood. 
Um, and victimhood comes not from circumstances. I promise you this. Please hear me again. I'm like begging you with you guys. Victimhood does not come from circumstances outside of you. Victimhood comes from your mindset. Victimhood comes from a belief system that says that you are not the most powerful force in your own life, even though you are. And I promise you, even when you do feel like a victim, even when you are in victimhood, you still maintain the most powerful force in your life. You still are the most powerful force in your life. You just have decided to give it away. When you are in victimhood, it's not that you lost power over your life. It's that you decided to put it in someone else's hands. Okay. So this is the most important part of it all because in any moment, even if you have been in victimhood for five decades, I don't even care for five decades, you can always retrace your steps and take back all the little bits of your personal power that you've put in other people's hands or in other um, events hands or whatever. Because all that personal power was always yours. You just put it somewhere else temporarily because you didn't know what you know now. You didn't know that that was actually yours to take back. You thought someone had taken it. You thought someone had the power to take it. No, no one ever has the power to take your personal power. You have just decided to give it away. So important. Okay, next topic, martyrdom. Let's talk about martyrdom. So <laughs> I'm getting so riled up because I'm so passionate about this. I don't want anyone to be a victim ever. And one more note about victimhood. I lied. I'm not going to move on to martyrdom just yet. One more note about victimhood. So. I mentioned victimhood comes from within, it comes from a belief system, which by the way, you always have control over, I promise. DM me if you wanna learn how to control your belief system, because we're not taught, but anyways. Um, so victimhood doesn't come from external circumstances, it comes from within, it comes from inside, it comes from a thought pattern, a belief system. Um, there are people in this world who experience things that someone would look at and say, oh my God, they're a victim. Oh my God, how could they ever feel empowered after that? Oh my God, that choice was taken from them. Oh my God, their life was robbed from them, was pried out of their hands. And there are still people who go through those experiences feeling empowered. There are still people who go through those experiences experiencing no resentment experiencing no loss of personal power, experiencing no anger. Um, and anger is an important step. I'm not saying you should never feel anger because I want you to feel the full range, the full spectrum of human emotions, but, um, but victimhood is never necessary no matter what happened to you. Even if something happened to you that you think that you've seen in movies, that you've read in papers, that you've heard other people talk about in a way that is like your personal power was ripped from you, you never have to feel disempowered. Now. Well, I'll talk about that on another, on another talk, but um, I went through an experience where you could argue that all of my personal power was ripped away from me. But in that moment, I felt this calm and this peace and this strength, and I knew that I was still in control, even though this thing had happened to me that was completely disempowering, and that so many people would look at and say, oh my God, poor you, or oh my God, how could you ever go on? Um, I felt this calm, clear sense of empowerment, even in the face of a circumstance that, you know, at face value was deeply disempowering. Um, so I promise you it's possible. And I know that because it happened to me. So uh, you don't have to be in victimhood even if you, it, even if someone tried to victimize you. Okay, great. So martyrdom, let's talk about this. Um, I also have a very storied past with martyrdom, um, so I'd love to talk to you about it now. Martyrdom is the sense that you are here to sacrifice. Martyrdom is uh, a belief system, a thought pattern that says, I will just sacrifice and sacrifice and sacrifice. I'll suffer, I'll suffer. You go on. Um, I'll suffer for your benefit. I'll suffer for you. I'll suffer so you don't have to. I'll suffer so that you love me. I'll suffer so that I earn your love. I'll suffer so that I earn your permission, approval, forgiveness. Um, I'll suffer so that I earn my own forgiveness. <sighs> Martyrdom is more complicated than this, and I actually have a call starting soon, so I have to hop off. But what I want you to know about martyrdom is that if you hold a magnifying glass up to your thoughts about martyrdom, for even a moment, 
you will see cracks start to form and you will see this martyrdom identity, this martyr identity start to crumble. Um, what is it about trying to be a martyr that is attractive to you? What is it? What is the story in your head? What are the sentences that are telling you that you want to be a martyr, that you should be a martyr, that being a martyr is noble? Look at these sentences. It's so important for you to get that awareness because martyrdom doesn't help anyone and it certainly doesn't help you. Um, it definitely leads to resentment, definitely leads to disempowerment, to you feeling out of control of your life, all of these things that we've been discussing. So you owe it to yourself to look at where the martyrdom is coming from. What sentences in your mind, what mindset, what beliefs are causing you to take action as a martyr, to put yourself in the position of a martyr? Look at that. Um, and that is codependency through and through. So that was a pretty solid overview. If you have any questions at all, you can always send me a message. Um, I uh, work with private clients and I am reopening enrollment for my group program in late September, early October. Um, so if you have any questions about either one of these, if you have questions about you know solving these problems in your own life for good, I know that I can help you. Um, so anything we've discussed today, um, disempowerment, feeling like a victim, um, having unconditional love versus having conditional love, being codependent with your children, being codependent with your spouse. Um, this is what I do. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful and enlightening for you. Um, and I will talk to you all on the next video. Have a beautiful day. Bye.